Anyway, here we go. We're heading down. Everybody, welcome back to having fun with that with empowered hatred. <laughs> We're going down. Dude, I love seeing the green levels. It brings it back memories. Of when we first were at the green levels, and now we are. If we have more of these, uh, so I know the like the Jigsaw Valley Perimeter Promenade, they're kind of like preset, right? So the only uh, levels we're really seeing that are new are in the Clockworks themselves, which is fine. But it would be nice to see some of these preset, like Jigsaw Valley levels, Perimeter Promenade, like number six or something. I mean, it'd be neat to see them. That's what I'm saying. right into it. Good job. Let's just activate them all. Always oh, got the hammer. There we go. Get that, you gotta get that lag out of our system. And we'll go from there. Dude, these poor guys. Get over the size of the shield. And yeah, we might as well just be using like one of those giant torto turtle shells. We have not uh we have not braved that kind of woke environment yet, I guess. Blah blah. Just love it, you one shot these things. Blah blah. Blah blah. Oh my goodness. Good job. Empowered hatred. You must learn to focus your, your, yourself, your own name. Is it the same one? Another one appear. I love the. Uh, so the, the. I know the background was like my wallpaper and my intro and all that. I think what really draws it together, it brings it all together. It's like a shag rug. We all, we all will know and love the dude. Everybody, anybody ever see the dude? Probably not. That's okay. But this greenness brings it together. I, I don't know if you guys knew this, but on the spectrum of light, the sun itself actually just um, shows it's it's it shows green light. I mean, it's it's probably one of the reasons that, that they believe the the plants themselves have green light. Or, sorry, are green. But it just looked, even with knowing that, it still looks really pretty. Thank you for that. He did it. Thank you. Dude, he like knocked it into me. Look at the synergy. This is if he knows. As long as we have one of them, we're fine. Rat tat tat tat. Trying to hit some. That is the Akron, right? Please. Who knows? He's. He's. Empowered Hatred is. He's hidden. You never see Empowered Hatred until its full form is released, and that's where you get Dragon Ball Z. Rock the Dragon. Dragon Ball Z. Doing your mad switch shooting skills. Really, the oh, we got hit. Really, <laughs> the only person that's mad is me because I can't do it. So mad, good. Is that? Does that mean really? Let, let's dissect the the uh, oh, the Urban Dictionary sense of the word mad, good. Are you really mad that they're good, or just, are they so mad that they're good? I never got that idiom. Oh, if it is one, I have this whole book. It's called The Best Things Since Sliced Bread. And so it's made in like the Reader's Digest kind of context. Where, uh, you know, it's little, little stories here and there. But it's it's basically the stories of like where this stuff came from. Dude, I love how his resurrection was over here, but he got beat so bad by the knockback. His corpse was actually couple tiles southwest. But it describes like it has a whole history, and this is like meaningless facts. Death 24, no radiance. What is this injustice? We are social warriors. We demand radiance before we even begin the game. In fact, we need to take radiance from other people. Even if they burn them and just give them to us because there's something inherently moral, immoral 
about having a lot of radiance. Anyway, there you go. There's our socialistic uh, justice. I don't care if Legoland or Lego Build has has millions of energy. It's something something in, immoral about having a lot of energy. We got to give his energy to other people. Well, the same kind of arguments going on in our uh, political stratum right now. It's kind of frustrating. Anyway, how dare I bring reality into a video game? Me and my moral judgments. Me and my dip into reality. Rian is youthful outlook on life and his lack of lag. What is this craziness? Fiatta! This is not new, right? I don't remember this three switches being up there, but I do remember like everything else about this area. So maybe this is a little new. And that's okay. I, I different it's like different full different flavors of the same kind of thing. You know, little variations that we can notice. And this is only like the veteran players that really notice this stuff. But hey, what I mean what are we but nerds that still play this game? years later. In every sense of the word, that's okay. I'll probably be playing video games to the end of time. Um, and one of the reasons I, you know, I, I, I read books that, that really say, spell out the, the, well, the badness, not the bad, not the total badness, the depravity, but the like any any book that argues for virtue usually argues in favor of um, moderation, right? So, technology is part of our culture. It would be kind of a, uh, I think, bad parenting of myself if I would not expose my children, and even myself, to a little bit of the culture. So at least we understand what's going on with it. I was trying to help, but we obviously failed. You know, so I I need to. Did we not step on that? Okay, I need to expose my kids to, you know, phones, etc., so they know they're, I mean, they're going to deal with it. Um, one of the colossal failings in our culture with the delayed adolescence prospect is that the... Um, here's what happens. You, you, you eventually, you, you're coddled. You don't have to work a job until you're 18. Suddenly you're going to college. If your parents are rich, they're going to pay for you to go to college. And then you live this lifestyle of no rules, no regulations, no mom and dad. If you don't have God in your life, or if you only had like Sunday school teaching, well, that's where apologetics comes into play, understanding what's important in all aspects of life. Then you're going to have real issue when you're given all this temptation and very little ability to control itself because you really honestly don't have a worldview, a solid understanding of life and how and stuff that works until you're like 30, in my opinion. I wish I hadn't gone to school till I was 30. Uh, maybe some people are set in their ways. Some people reach maturity a little bit sooner or slower than others and that's okay usually it's slower these days just because of the nature of america at least in my culture so i'm obviously speaking from an american um kind of paradigm uh, but it is what it is right so i need like i give my uh my like an hour a day she plays her game we got her human fall flat for her birthday why is the second half of this level so short like clockworks in general. Maybe it's because of our depth. We're only at depth 25. They get longer as as uh, we progress. I don't know. I don't know that exact formula. I'm sure but the, the data miners will probably tell me a little bit more. Decons. Ja, 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 ja. Mercy. You gotta forget the stretches. I know you guys are. See, the, the, the game Minimax Tiny Verse is in, like, Korea, so they're 14 hours ahead of where we are, so it's 4.24 a.m., it's like 6.30 p.m. there. And I have those videos coming out at, like, 2 p.m. my time, so it's like 4 a.m. their time. I should really gonna rethink that stuff. We're going in. We are Ahab. Just, you have to stand there, buddy. <laughs> I think it's inherently unfair that you could dodge and I cannot on a whim. Anyway. Social justice warriors go. Might be a little biased. But at the same time, the, um... You know, my... Um, what do they say? The, uh... Hate and mockery are usually, in my opinion, the two biggest weapons of the atheist. 
you know, mostly ad hominem arguments. Ad hominem, if you're not familiar with the term, means you attack the person rather than the belief, which is a false paradigm. Um, ideas need to be examined and not people. People, sure, maybe their histories and whatnot. You know what? So understanding where they're coming from, their starting point, especially, oh, that's why I read uh, secular biographies too. I read Bertrand Russell's, and I know Gandhi's not necessarily secular. I got Gandhi's, I have Thomas Aquinas's, I read Chuck Norris's, I read, uh, what else do I have? I read this guy that was a uh, heroin addict in, uh, in York. I forget his, his name was like Ron, not Johnson, something else. Um, but reading biographies are extremely important. Um, finding out where people come from. It, I mean, it's just basically getting your finger on the pulse of the culture. What, oh, I thought I had the Griffin again for some reason. I mean, that, that, that culture finger is extremely important. Knowing where people go, every every person, uh, you're answering a person. It's not necessarily a question. Whenever the the deep issues of life come up and worldviews conflict and all that stuff, you, you gotta understand. Oh, I'm not glad you didn't double tap us. Have you ever been hit twice by a gremlin thwacker? Ain't pretty, yo. Ain't pretty. I'm trying to help, but this might just knock him into us. I mean, them into him. There we go. Where are you going, buddy? Into my gun. That's what I thought. <laughs> Please let go of the charge. <laughs> it's where it's Java, not me. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. You know what we need? Little buddy. It'll make this. It'll tie the room together, just like that shag rub we were talking about. Are there three healers? Okay, no. I thought there were three healers in there for a second. Just one dude yelling at us. I remember back in the day when I, I first were <laughs> experienced a uh, a decon zone. I would I would uh, actually opt to before I knew better. Right, I would opt to get one or two of the uh, these operable machines. Not realizing that even their distraction, it's not, it's not really worth it. Save your, save your CE for a danger room. You don't need one of these guys in this tiny little level. It's not usually the most uh, optimum strat. But uh, who knew? Some you make poor decisions. We don't know better. It's part of learning, especially if you play the game with a friend. Oh, 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 oh gotta go. Does this make it go in faster? Oh, yes, it does. shoot outside the box. <laughs> Here we go. This might be close enough for empower hatred. What empowers hatred though? We can dive into that one. Uh, that seems it seems worthy of a philosophical deep dive. So hatred itself, right? What is what does hatred assume? So hatred assumes an injustice. Usually, right? Or either an injustice or a bias, one or the other. So you see something, you weigh it between the world, you see something that's unfair. Then you say, okay, I don't like that because it's unjust. The other the other part of it is, is bias. Racism is a strong example of this. I I, I see that as, uh, and usually what well, bias, ha bias uh, goes against all logic. So in my opinion, the atheist is a bias because you go into... Um, if you have a purely open mind and you look at everything in this world compared to zero, you see there is design. So the best evidence we have is design. The only way you don't believe that is if you just say, we don't know yet. Well, there's evidence of design. The evidence of nothing is not here, otherwise there would be nothing. You know, the no god kind of concept. And Oh, give science time. Oh, but that also, how, much do you, how much time do you have? Like, where are we going with this? It, but even that, like, um, the origin of the universe assumes there was a point where there was no time. So again, that you're going toward the nothing. You'd rather stray toward the nothing. Anyway, it's going to be great because we have all these rocket puppies here. Ooh. Coming, man. 
Oh, we totally missed. Ray, I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. Shot him in the back. That was dishonorable to the end. Okay, let's not die. Let's grab that heart, buddy. Come on, Wayne. Come on, Wayne. Got this. Oh, you. Oh, Okay, no, 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 no. Sad Panda, we haven't gotten a spark in a while from uh, RNG gods. So that's hatred in a nutshell, roughly. It's either, it's one of two things, either injustice or, justice or bias. Um, a strong, <laughs> that's just my opinion, right? You can believe in agnosticism or atheism or design or whatever you wish, but that's just that's how I rationally get my way away from atheism, because there would be nothing if there is no nothing that transcends our reality the way we have right now. Um, I can't really think of anything else. So envy. So how does envy trigger off of uh, hatred? Actually, hatred triggers off of envy. You see the injustice to the point where. You want to take it away from someone else rather than them have it. Or you enjoy it as well. They just straight up don't deserve it. So yeah, both hatred and injustice kind of clamoring in the same nutshell. Please. I'm so sorry. Shields up. Red alert. These guys are freaking Star Trek Enterprise 2.0. If it bleeds. Somehow hit it. Accept this. Let's do it again. Uh, I guess another time, right? Right in the back. Watch out. Oh, please. You let go too fast. Java doesn't know any better. Talk about Java like it's a. It's a, it's a it's a friend you have to work with. We don't say that about reality. Yeah, gravity doesn't know any better. That's just how the, how the world is, man. You know, you can't. It's, it's very tough to make that argument. Just so aim toward the dude and then run and not have every little thing pop out of my body. Those little bleeding ash works. Dude, I've had fantasies. Fantasies, right? As much as, much as you can in the Spiral Knights world. I'm playing this game of, like, making a fight sequence where, like, you know, you get stabbed in the stomach and then a bunch of little squares fall, fall out. I thought, I just, I don't know. Someday when I have all this major time in the world, I will make a fighting sequence using Solotron's, uh, guide to, uh, a better Spiral Knights. But you know, that, that's actually false too. Because if something is important to you, you make time for it. Because otherwise time just gets away from you. So, obviously it's not a huge priority in my life right now. Perhaps in the future it will be. But not at the moment. Anyway. So, we went with H. Rule. Let's go with empowerment. How do things get empowered? Well, either by physical ability. You measure it by time plus matter plus chance. And you see which is stronger. This is, uh, again, one of the arguments of fascism is they're going to go that route. If the strength and nature and evolution is made by, if the empowerment is just either man's opinion or by pure strength itself, well then why are we bowing down to the great star Beetlejuice? Because it is a thousand times greater than our sun. Our science has taught us a better god to worship. When we go, oh my goodness, what is this madness? Who? Oh, and we're getting hit by rockets. Hey, this might be our downfall. Oh no! Please! We need two pills. We did we actually made it happen somehow. We had to we had to cleanse the fire. And uh You're not dead yet, come on, buddy. We had to cleanse the fire and <laughs> and use a health pill. And the spiral gods were with us, that's all I can say. We're just gonna miss every uh, shot for the next twenty minutes. Oh, there we go. Huh. We 
need it. We need to do another one. <laughs> we need another one. Okay, we're done. I guess we're purchasing a spark of life. <laughs> it's worth it, I guess. But this whole arena is not going to be worth like 6k, but you know, it's, it's, it's okay. This is, this is why we get our uh, imaginary money in this game. So we can enjoy it, and so we can say, well, like, what will, we, what will we be hoarding it for? Another costume? LOL. We already have the best outfit in the game. Shadow Sun. On day one, I knew this called it, and it was absolutely true in everything I'm saying. So anyway, let's get back to empowerment. What empowers things? Well, it'd be, it'd be tough to say strength empowers things, right? If, if we go on the pure, pure uh, strength and power... Uh, monologue actually Nietzsche adv advocates for this read Nietzsche um, women have <laughs> somebody actually clipped this when I said it on twitch women have that there's no logical reason why women or children should have any power Ooh. Or anybody weak. Why would we care about the starving? Why is there an injustice to the starving? Why Why even care about that? We're obviously stronger America. They should care about themselves and get themselves better. But people forget that that kind of value itself comes from Christ. It comes from the Judeo-Christian worldview that God says people are valuable. All people, not just the wealthy, not just the poor, not just the strong. It's that, that assumption. You got and you have to remember where that worldview comes from. And um, if you want an example, you can look in the media. So one of the reasons that American media is so popular is because there's always a savior concept. Usually, I mean, sometimes not, right? There's depressing movies out there that people just make for the sense of art and the sense of I don't know what else they make them for. There's always exceptions, is what I'm saying. Um, so you you keep that in mind. But but. For the most part, you go to like a Western movie. I saw one with uh, Jackie Chan where he actually played a like serious role, and it was depressing. The hero like dies in the end with no obvious um, recourse for you know him do giving that sacrifice. It just kind of was like senseless because um, the the other person didn't listen to his advice anyway. <laughs> when you uh, when you go toward a communist China, where they teach you there is no God, and that the government's basically God. And then your wealth could be taken, everything could be taken from you in a moment's notice. I mean, there's nothing but depression. I mean, there's a uh, uh, typical Indian tragedies are uh, movies where everybody dies. And that's just how there is. Because the king is stronger and just wills things to happen and you can't do anything to fight it. It's extremely depressing and more realistic in their culture. Only in America where we have this, uh, this kind of like... You know, eventually good wins because good does. That's just what the good does. And that might ha not happen for a while. Sometimes evil, evil is given its day. And that's also scriptural. But it's only in, like, that sense of the of the word or however you want to look at it. Okay, hello? I'm just going to... Can we get that? Oh, my gosh, dude. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing where that comes from. So you have to remember where that comes from. Empowerment. Why, uh, why empower anything? You know, it's important to ask these, because so what happens when you when you don't ask this? Well, you, you lose sight of history, and you actually devalue what history can give you. Socialism itself, if you take the historical lesson of it, um, you'll see that it's failed in so many ways, and been the ruin and downfall of so many cultures. And yet we try it again, because we think we know better. And we'll do it better than they did last time. There's no form of self-discipline that's going to make you like have, make one form that has never worked before work now it's just not ooh, it's just not gonna happen it's that not work okay good <laughs> I was like come on <laughs> my guns are made for shooting that should have worked like this time I know socialism has failed in every single instance in mankind's history but this time I know we've uh this goes to a lot of things where man's pride just kind of gets the better of him I know, uh, you know, there've been like 2,000 years of critiquing of Jesus, but this time, 2019, we have discovered the secret of 
of Jesus' message and what he really taught. I mean, come on, man. Really? With all this time, all these theologians and philosophers, and you figured out that the whole thing was just like a sort of like a stoic myth? Now? <laughs> and, uh, and no one else figured this out before you? You are, you are that special, huh? Okay. So empowerment has to come from something transcendent. The, the idea is it comes from outside of yourself. I mean, you can you can feel a lot of this. So the in the post-truth culture, one of the, um, the basic tenets is you, you can't, at least I try not to, even though I believe in the narrative of scripture, which means scripture is true, you can tell what it says. Just like when I am talking to you, you can understand what I'm saying. You can dissect every single word and take it out of context. But I hope you get the general message of what I'm trying to say. If not, I'm not communicating well, and i got to work on that. Um, but if I say something like, I am a Christian, and I make truth claims like that, I, I, I hope that's coming off. They, well, what he really meant was, he's only a Christian when he talks and lives. Like, oh, how, uh, <laughs> you can dissect it, I guess, but you get, you sh you, it's hard to really get away from the general message. The only way you can do that is by convincing yourself that a lie is true. And that happens so often. So the transcendent worldview, um, where there's something greater in this life that is greater than your sense of will, purpose, um, life ideology, views, something that can actually trump, pardon the word, that can actually like get in the way of what you, th you think is right. Like what, what if everything you value in life as good is actually abhorrent? And not like if you have like an addiction to pornography, what if that is not viewed as a good thing for your life? And you don't like that because you like your sin. You like, you like that stuff. I, I had a guy tell me that he's a Christian, but but he, he's not. No, he's a believer in Christ, but he's not a Christian. We're just gonna walk backwards through every single one of these freaking slimes while I talk, because he likes the things that are bad for him. And he even just straight up in me, he's like, I'm not ready for it. He's like, I know they're bad, and I'll work on it. But right now, I'm not at that point where I can say, you know, I'm, I'm a follower. I believe in him because I think it's true, because I see it. His name is Carlos, and he was having a, um, he actually walked out of work the other day. I, I don't know what's going on in his life. He, he, showed, he opened it up a little bit to me. He said he's uh, going to counseling with his wife. But they tried to push too much on him at once he wasn't ready for her. I think that's, that's what I was getting, getting at, but, you know, some, some people just like their sin too much. And that's when you have to, uh, like, prayer, oh, prayer goes a long way. <laughs> Because people are given the dignity of choice. Um, people are allowed to bring evil into this world because that's that's just part of the choice they have. Um, God gives us this this great dignity. Mercury shade, hello. We can take it. By allowing us to make our choice without him stepping in. Imagine if God would step in and make our choice for us. He would, uh, by far, uh, like we, our, our natural resistance to authority would kick in. We'd want to resist him somehow, even if we were to into our minds. So he pulls back a bit. And lets our own evil kind of like circulate and permeate. And it's only then that you realize that, that he, he gives us this kind of rain here, that he gives us just enough reason to make faith or and belief a reasonable thing, but leaves enough out where you have to have faith. Like, for example, the light switch analogy I, I, I sort of like to use. Um, I can flick a light switch on. I can have faith that the light's going to turn on because of past experience and evidence, but I don't really know till it actually turns on. The promise given in Scripture from Moses is you will know I am God when you get to the promised land. Eh, 21 is not bad. Yeah, we did okay. Anyway, there's your theological lesson for the day. Um, once again, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, click the like button. Subscribe to me see more in the future. Leave a comment, because I love hearing you guys. And encouragement's always good in this, uh, how old is this game now? Eight years old? Dude, it's like as old as my daughter. Technically, I guess 2011's when the, like, beta came out for testing. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.